Servos are awesome devices that enable your project to interact with the real world. They are popular amongst makers and professionals alike, and you can find them in many industrial applications, even in robotics. Today, we're going to look at how servos work, how to use them, and what to consider when choosing a server. To follow along with the examples in this video, you'll need a Raspberry Pi Pico and either a positional or rotational servo, or both if you have them handy. You'll also need a servo horn. You'll usually get a small bag of them when you purchase a servo. I put links in the guide to all the hardware I'll be using. Servos come in a unique shape, which usually contains a controller, motor, and gearbox. Depending on the type, they can be rotated to an exact angle or set to a specific speed. They work using a signal called pulse width modulation, or PWM for short, which is a pulsing signal that is sent at high speed from a microcontroller, such as a Raspberry Pi Pico. As the width of the pulse signal changes, so does the angle or speed of the servo. Note, not all PWM is the same. Some devices, like the Raspberry Pi, use digital PWM which can cause jitter in the servo. If you're experiencing this, you might need a servo driver, which I've linked in the guide if you want to check it out. There are two main types of servos, positional and continuous rotation. A positional servo can be rotated to an exact angle, usually between zero and 180 degrees. These are the most common servos and are used in things like steering in RC cars and joints in robotic arms. A continuous rotation servo behaves more like a common motor and, as the name suggests, turns continuously. With these servos, instead of controlling angle, you control speed and direction. We'll talk a bit more about these later. Let's have a look at how to use a positional servo with a Raspberry Pi Pico. First, we'll wire it up. Servos use three wires to control them. We have a ground wire, which is usually black or brown, the positive wire, which is usually red, and the PWM wire, which is usually white or orange. Connect the ground wire to a ground pin on the Pico. Connect the positive wire to the VBUS pin on the Pico. And connect the PWM wire to GPIO 16. Note, you can choose any other GPIO, I'm just using this one. Note, I'm powering this servo directly from the Raspberry Pi Pico, but if I were going to use this servo to do any real work, I would probably want to connect it to an external power supply. Now that we're wired up, let's set up the Pico. We could control the servo by hand coding the PWM signals to move it, but to make things much easier, we're going to use the MicroPython servo library, which does all of this for us. Plug in the Pico and open up Bonnie. Head to Tools, Manage Packages, and search for the MicroPython servo library. Click the library, wait for it to load, and then click install. You can confirm that the library is installed if under the Raspberry Pi Pico file manager, there is a folder with lib and then servo inside of it. If you can't see the file explorer, go to view and click files. Now head on over to the guide and find example one. Copy and paste the script into a new file in Funny and save the script to your Pico. Now run the script and you can see the servo moving back and forth. Now let's have a look at what's going on in this script. First we import time and we import the servo library. We need time to add some delays and servo, of course, so we can interact with the servo. We create an instance of the servo and we pass in the GPIO pin that we attach the PWM wire to the Pico. I've created a variable here so that we can change the delay in the script quite easily later. Next, we start an infinite loop and then we start another loop which steps up from 0 to 180. As the loop counts up, it will change the angle of the servo from zero to 180. We print the current angle so we can see it on the plotter, and then we instruct the servo to physically move to that position using myservo.write. Finally, we told the Pico to delay for this many milliseconds. This allows the servo to move 
and also slows things down so we can actually see them. Once this loop runs for 180 times, we start a second loop, which just does the exact same in reverse. This moves the servo backwards from 180 to zero. So that's pretty cool, but it doesn't give us much control over the servo. Let's have a go at directly controlling the servo to move to specific positions. Head over to example two in the guide and copy paste that code into a new script. Now run the script and we can see the servo jumping around to specific angles. Stop the script and we'll have a look at how it works. Again, we import time and servo and we set up our servo to the my servo variable. This time we start another infinite loop, but we do something different. We're doing three chunks here that look very similar. In the first chunk, we set the servo to 90 degrees. 90 is halfway between zero and 180. So this is our midpoint on the servo. Next, we sleep for one second so that we can see that it's moved and stopped. And we move to the second chunk. This time we move to zero degrees. This can be thought of as the furthest left position. Again, we sleep for another second so that we can see that it's moved there. Finally, in the last chunk, we move to 180 degrees, which can be thought of as the rightmost position. Finally, we do one more sleep for one second and the loop repeats. As an optional side quest, have a go at updating the script with your own angles to get a better feel for the servo in action. Now let's have a look at rotational servos. Under the hood, they are controlled the exact same as positional servos using PWM. To see this in action, let's jump back to example one. Stop the Pico in Thony and unplug the positional servo. Let's replace it with a rotational servo. I'm putting a wheel on mine so we can see it move more accurately. Open the file from example one back up and we're going to make one small change to slow things down so we can see the changing speed a little easier. What we want to change is the delay ms variable. I'm going to change it to about 100 milliseconds. Let's save that and run the script and observe what happens with a rotational servo. As you can see, the servo sped up in one direction and then it sped back down. And then it did the same in reverse, speeding up in the reverse direction and then slowing back down. You may notice that the script was written with position in mind, and that's fine. Changing the position in the script is really only changing the underlying PWM signal. And for rotational servo, PWM determines the speed and direction instead of angular position. The MicroPython servo library has been designed with only positional servos in mind. If you're working with the rotational servos a lot, you might want to use a library that is more focused on them. Like this one. This library claims to be for continuous servos. So I would give that a try. Now let's take control of this servo. Stop the currently running script in Thony and open the script from example two. If you changed example two, go back to the guide and copy paste the script again. Run the script again, and you will see the servo stop, spin at full speed in one direction, and then full speed in the other direction. Let's have a look at how this works. This is the exact same script for example two as with the Angular servo. However, this time, instead of setting angle, we're setting speed. With the Angular servo, we set 90 degrees for the midpoint. The midpoint on a continuous rotation servo is standing still. The servo is not moving. For the angular servo when moving to hard left or zero degrees, the servo moves at full speed in one direction. And then with the angular servo when moving to the far right direction, the continuous rotation servo spins in the other direction at full speed. Just like before, have a go at updating the script with your own values to get a better feel for the rotational servo in action. So we know how a servo works and how to use one. Let's talk about how to choose the right one for your next project. There's a few important factors to consider when choosing a servo. The most important factor is how much power or torque you need. You need to choose a servo that can deliver enough torque 
to move whatever it is you need that servo for. Directly related to torque are the voltage and current requirements of the servo. You need to make sure you pick a servo that has a voltage range that your circuit can provide for. And you also need to make sure your circuit can provide enough current to run your servo properly. Check out the guide where I've gone into much more detail on how to assess torque and power when picking a servo for your project. There's also the size of the servo. The most common sizes available are micro and standard. Micro servos are the smallest of the bunch, making them great for tucking into tight spaces. However, since they have the smallest motors, they also have the smallest amount of torque. Standard servos are larger than micro servos, allowing them to have larger motors and therefore provide a lot more torque. Finally, some extra things to consider are plastic or metal gears. Servos with plastic gears will be cheaper, but metal gears will last longer and are usually found in servos with more torque. Spline size. The spline of a servo is the exposed shaft that you attach your servo horn arm or wheel to. Most servos will come with a small bag of accessories that will fit it, but if you are buying additional accessories, make sure they fit the spline size of the servo you are choosing. And finally, there are other control methods. While PWM is by far the most common control interface, you can also find more exotic servos that use things like serial other than PWM for control. With all that in mind, if you need help choosing a servo for your project, or are having trouble getting your servos up and running, let us know about it over on the forums. Until next time, happy making.